G'day. If you're anything like me, this is pretty much how every day starts. And even though I've only got one of these, you wind up carrying all of this stuff and covering for pretty much every contingency you can imagine to make life as comfortable as possible for the most important person in the world. And this is why so many of us are buying mid-size SUVs. There's plenty of room inside for life's realities, they're compact enough on the outside, and they don't look like a small van. For the past five years, the Mazda CX-5 has been the most popular SUV of all, and Robbo picked the new Touring variant as the sweet spot of the range at the launch of the new second generation CX-5 last year. So, to see if Australia and Robbo were right, I've been living with this CX-5 Touring as the fourth member of my family for the past three months and 7,000 kilometres. Our time with the Touring has been jam-packed with stereotypes, including trips to Ikea, Bunnings, the supermarket, and even the annual Christmas madness. So we've certainly tried a bit of everything with it. The Touring sits above the Max Sport and below the GT in the CX-5 lineup, and comes standard with all the important safety boxes ticked for me, including auto emergency braking and a five-star ANCAP rating, with added pluses like AEB in the rear and rear cross-traffic alerts. It's also got other important stuff like dual zone climate control and built-in sat-nav, but the otherwise excellent multimedia system still doesn't come with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. There's a few other added details, but the big thing you get over the Mac Sport is artificial leather trim with suede inserts compared to cloth, but it's not quite like the real leather you get on the GT. I'm not 100% sold on the Touring's trim for family use though, as the suede isn't ideal for cleaning off smeared banana or pretty much anything else. The new CX-5's interior was stretched a bit in a few dimensions, which leaves good room for four adults to sit, and the directional rear air vents are a welcome touch, as are the dual cup and bottle holders front and rear, and the ample power and USB connections. One thing you probably won't notice on a test drive though, is that with a rearward facing child seat fitted, it pushes the front passenger seat forward to the point where space is actually pretty limited for anyone taller than my modest 172cm height. This isn't an issue with a few of the CX-5's rivals, like the Mitsubishi Outlander and VW Tiguan, thanks to their sliding rear seats. The boot still isn't the biggest in its class, but it suits my purpose as well. And I really like the retractable cargo blind that lifts with the tailgate. The CX-5 has always been one of the sportier mid-size SUVs, and the new one continues that tradition. The steering is pretty sharp, there's very little body roll, and you can have a fair bit of fun through the corners if you want to. This sportiness means that it's not quite as comfortable as some of its competitors, the Escape and the Tiguan being prime examples, but it's more refined than before, and it's still got that Mazda personality about it. Our Touring is the petrol version, which means the 2.5 litre engine and all-wheel drive. This bigger engine, no turbo combination is pretty unique these days, and you might be surprised by the amount of revs it needs to get the job done. It's got good performance overall, but the best way to summarise it is that it's not particularly grungy off the lights, and really comes alive at higher speeds, like when accelerating onto a freeway. One thing the bigger engine doesn't mean is more fuel consumption. With a good mix of around town and highway driving, we've been able to get closer to its official combined fuel consumption figure than either the Escape or the Tiguan have had before it, and they both had smaller petrol turbo engines. And the CX-5 manages it on regular 91 unleaded. That's pretty impressive. Over the past three months, the CX-5 Touring has been a faithful companion to the Flynn family. It has enough space, it's fun to drive, and has all the features I need. If I were buying one, I'd probably pick the Touring over the more expensive GT, and it's fair to say it's worth the extra investment over the Max Sport. We're moving on to the Honda CRV VTIS next, so keep an eye out for that one. Mm -hmm.